Hello, I'm Brigantia of Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Friday and welcome to Storyteller's Corner. This week we are looking at the movie Chocolat. Chocolat came out in the year 2000 with Julianne Binoche playing the lead role of Vianne. She's a chocolatier who's newly arrived in a small French village post-World War II. It's an isolated and straight-laced place who uh, just not quite sure what to make of Vianne or her chocolatry business. The story takes place between the beginning of Lent and last until Easter Sunday. Vianne and her daughter arrive in this town with a gusty north wind, and the north wind is actually practically a character in and of itself in this movie, so watch if that intrigues you. And uh, immediately upon arrival, they uh, find a shop that has a little apartment above, and they rent it out. Their landlady, played by Dame Judy Dench, is kind of a little bit of a rebel in her own way, and she warms up to Vianne gradually albeit gruffly, as do many of the villagers who find themselves intrigued by Vianne's chocolate, her sense of life, her worldview, and, you know, the small comforts in life her little treats represent. However, the local Comte de Renault, who is also the mayor, and he is the landlord to many of the village businesses, he's put off by, the, by Vianne. She doesn't attend church, and he is scandalized to discover that Vianne has never been married, and therefore her child was born out of wedlock. Ooh, late 50s Catholic French countryside. Hmm, that would be something to get the tongues wagging. Uh, and he's an influential man, so he proceeds to bully the young village priest who's uh, been at his pulpit for all of five weeks at the start of the story to encourage the locals to keep their distance from the chocolate tree. And he begins putting his, his pressure around the village himself directly. And that's when a small-scale cultural war begins. Uh, the Comte is trying to maintain the status quo and uh, encourage austerity, uh, tradition, and not just tradition in the sense of, oh, look at this wonderful thread we have tying us together. It's more so tradition because it is tradition, and therefore the sake of tradition we're going to continue to carry on exactly as we always have. And he's also big on having a strict interpretation of the Lenten fast. Now, come to find out, this micromanaging nobleman uh, has his own domestic issues. The Comtesse has run off and left him. He can't bring himself to admit it, even to himself, let alone anybody else. And the sense of failure he's carrying about his personal life is providing extra fuel in his crusade against Vianne and her chocolates. As the story goes on, it becomes clear that the village doesn't desire controversy. They're just wanting to enjoy their lives and if it wasn't for the Comte, there wouldn't be any major uproar to begin with, once the people got used to having the chocolate tree around. However, the Comte is determined to lead through example and make his way the only way, even going so far as to attempt to reform the character of a local abusive husband, teach him manners, make him go through a process of repentance and through the church. Uh, but unfortunately, these reforms proved to be uh, just skin deep. They didn't last, and... Not only did it not result in substantial change, it actually led to tragedies. Uh, in the end, the Comte learns that uh, what people needed was not to be controlled or directed, but simply to be left alone to act in accordance with their own common sense and desires, take pleasure in the simple joy of being alive. What the Comte needed was to accept that there are some things beyond anyone's control, including his own, and that the failures in life, these things occur to everyone, but it's not the end of everything. He all learned to allow the healing process to take place, so he let go, and then on Easter Sunday, the whole village felt a sense of release that they hadn't felt in years. I love to watch this movie in the springtime because of its themes of renewal, possibilities, and reconciliation are completely in line with the meaning of the spring season. All good storytelling should, you know, at this, at once speak to us on a level that's deeper, but also simultaneously giving us a place to escape. And with everything going on in the world, there is something marvelously comforting about a story in which the chief conflict is whether or not a chocolate shop run by a non-churchgoer is too racy for a countryside village. Because not every problem we face in life or in fiction is of galactic proportions. And stories of this kind are a reminder of that, and it's reassuring in a way. When we are overwhelmed by problems we can't see solutions for, it can help to redirect our attention to smaller issues that we can successfully deal with. And when we do what's within our own power, it helps restore our confidence in our own agency. And that helps keep us moving forward and teaches us to break the big problems into smaller, more manageable chunks. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. If it's an old favorite of yours, this is the best time of the year to watch it. So let me know what you think. Uh, leave me a comment below or come see us on Discord at Blackbird's Brew. 
There's a link to join below along with a whole other links of where you can find uh, content of this kind. Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.